Um, boo. <laughs> Welcome to episode one of my Dark Summer series. It was quite an easy start. I knew where to go actually because I've had quite a few emails asking me to look into sleep paralysis. Piss, para, piss, piss. Paralysis. Sleep paralysis. I'm not saying that word again. I can't say it. There's something in my glob that won't let me. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think the best place to start is in my favourite area of research, and that is the history. Nightmare. Something we are all familiar with. But the origin of the word actually goes back to as far as Old English. The language brought over and developed by the Anglo-Saxons. The word mer became mer, as in our modern day word for an adult female horse, but back then it meant a female evil spirit that lies on and suffocates the sleeper. Does that sound familiar? Maybe nothing's ever changed in the history of dreams. You know, maybe Alfred the Great was burning cakes because of more than just Guthrum and the Vikings. Maybe he had a lot more on the mind. Maybe he had those nightmares to contend with. I had a nightmare recently. I think this was a few months ago, actually, but it's been playing on my mind ever since. There's not been a day since I had it where I haven't thought about it. I was in my old work offices. It's a place I haven't worked since about 2016. I knew in my head it was midday because I was thinking about lunch, uh, but I noticed everything was dark out the window. So I went to go and see what was going on. And as I walked outside to a little bit of the green they had, one of my old colleagues was there and he was just walking around looking panicked. And I looked up to the left to what should be the midday sun just coming up to be above me. But I noticed it was low in the horizon, almost like it was dusk, almost like it was setting. And it looked brown and weathered and old. And I was just staring at it and looking at my watch. I never wear a watch, so definitely a dream saying midday. Anyway, my colleague turns to me and said, have you not heard? And I said, no. And he said, the sun's dying. Just this morning, scientists realize it's just collapsing in on itself. We've got a few hours maybe. So I thought he was joking. I was looking at this thinking, maybe my watch is wrong. Maybe it's, maybe it's the evening. So I bring up my phone and bring up the, the Guardian website and they've got a live text like end of the world live text and it starts off with um, scientists discover this morning sun is about to die only a few hours left on earth there's something about the feeling the atmosphere and the mood of that dream that seemed real i felt it that morning when i woke up i felt that that feeling in the pit of my stomach and i couldn't concentrate even now i can remember what i felt the emotions i was going through within the dream itself and there's the incubus which is Latin for to sit on, but was actually a demon first documented in ancient Rome. In later writings, the incubus and the nightmare were sometimes used together or interchangeably on writings about the subject of sleep paralysis and nightmares. Even into the 19th century, the word nightmare meant the paralyzed state in sleep rather than a scary or frightening dream. But going back further, there have been writings throughout all ancient civilizations which cover so many interpretations, including contact or punishment from the gods, particularly during a sleep paralysis episode, to it being a portal to the afterlife. A liminal space, if you will. So early treatments of these demon dreams included shaving the head, exorcism, and lobbing out the throat, as well as bloodletting, that old favorite. 10th century Persian physician Abu Bakari wrote about the nightmares in his medical guide. He believed it was caused by vapours of phlegm ascending from the stomach to suffocate the brain during sleep. I mean, that sure was a new idea at the time, but he cured it using old methods, bloodletting again. And as the world enlightened, more scientific thoughts and rationale were sought. However, the treatment at the time was still equally as stupid. Uh, one book suggested poking the sleeper with a pin or even uh, shaking them awake, which we know now is extremely dangerous and probably the worst thing you can do. And what was the other one? Oh yeah, bloodletting still. Letting blood. You've probably seen Henry Fuseli's painting, The Nightmare. It was painted in 1781 and depicts an incubus or nightmare sitting on the chest of a sleeping woman. This demon is very common in the history of art. And I bet you however far back the art would go, I'm pretty sure it would make the modern eyes of sleep paralysis sufferers wince. 
What's interesting is the differences in the cultures and their stories behind sleep paralysis. They're also weirdly different yet the same. You'll see what I mean, I'm going to read you some now. A legendary Norse saga from the 13th century called the Yingling Saga mentions of a mare. King Van Landy is killed by a mare, which was conjured up by a Finnish sorceress after the king abandoned his wife. Once asleep, King Van Landy calls out that a nightmare rode him. It trod on his legs so they nearly broke and then pressed down on his head so that he died. In the Canadian province of Newfoundland, the nightmare is referred to as the old hag. And remember that, we'll come back to it. In St. Lucia, the creature is called Kokma, the spirit of a dead, unbaptized baby which attacks people in their beds and cuts off their respiration by jumping on their chest and grasping their throats. Catalonia has the tale of Pesanta, a black animal, often a dog or a cat, that invades people's homes and sits on their chests while they're asleep. In Inuit culture, shamans can cast a spell when a person is sleeping. This causes an experience called, and apologies for the pronunciation, Akmangarink, during which a person can't move, talk or scream and is visited by a shapeless or faceless presence. Japanese folklore refers to the Kanashibari, which is the state of being totally bound, as if constrained by metal chains. Cambodia has something called the Kamok Sankat, or the ghost that pushes you down. In Brazil, the Pisadira is a long fingernailed lurker, something or someone who hangs around on roofs late at night in order to trample on the chest of those who sleep. So who is suffering from <clears throat> sleep paralysis? Well, according to some studies, 30% of the population, I think that's the US, have suffered at one point in their life. And 5% of the people suffer from the more sensory or the tactile hallucinations while they're in a state of paralysis. And it seems a lot of you do too. I put a call out on Instagram for you to email me your stories of, you know what, and a lot of you got back to me and I thank you for that. So you're probably expecting me to like read some stories to you now uh, akin to Robert Welsh's ghost stories and do makeup on a Monday where I do read some stories for him. But this is my channel and instead you're getting a PowerPoint presentation. Enjoy. Ah, uh, hello everybody. Good afternoon and good morning, good evening. Um, this is a PowerPoint presentation on sleep paralysis as per the stories of my lovely emailers uh, .com. Uh, the presentation is done by myself. I'm the professor of poo research and stuff, Marcus Welsh. That's me. Well, the aims of this presentation is to collect and collate the data from the emails to establish patterns, to compare those patterns to aforementioned historical and folklore cultural writings, to dig a bit deeper than the dream itself and look at possible causation, and to have a bloody fun time. As you can see here on the right, it's just a, a little bit of fun. <clears throat> Common themes um, I found with all the stories and emails. When the stories refer to their state, there is no movement. The dreamer is unable to talk or scream. In over 20 stories, the dreamer was aware of their surroundings. So that's taken on the guise of various things. They knew they were next to their partners or husbands, wives. They knew the kids were in the other room. They knew what room they were in. They could see, say, features of that room, wardrobes, TVs, etc. And the final point here, sometimes real life was going on around them and they could see it happening, but they were asleep. So in one of the stories, somebody said, I could see it all going on. I knew this and this and this happened. But their partner said to them, you were asleep the whole time. OK, let's look at the recurrence. Um, in 14 stories, this was the first and only occurrence of sleep paralysis. So the first time it happened to them and only time. In three of the stories, it happened two, three times in their lifetime. A lot of them were actually in a row, say three nights in a row. And in 17 of the stories, it has been referred to as a long-term issue for the sleep paralysis sufferer in this case. Possible reasons. 39 stories had some background information and speculation on why the paralysis, paralysis occurred. Uh, here is a little Excel graph. Um, we're going to go through the reasons from the least occurrences to the most. 
So they watched a scary film that happened once. Uh, a recent loss in the family, so that's um, a real a deep trauma and, and grief. Two people mentioned that had happened before. Their sleep paralysis. Um, haunted house free. So there was a couple of stories where people have said, "I know this house is haunted," or "We know for a fact this house is on a, like an ancient burial ground, etc." Post or during pain, one person in particular was actually in the process of giving birth during their story. So, yikes, ouch. Uh, sleeping on their back. Now, I heard quite a few things and particularly read it a lot in the research that a lot of this happens when somebody is sleeping on their back, whether it be unusual angle for them or whether it's... I don't know, I can't I can't find a link between it and actually seeing only that that being mentioned four times means maybe that's not, not really a factor. Uh, lack of sleep, insomnia, four... Um, and sleeping somewhere new, eight, and then life stress at the end there, 14. So this is during times of high stress, that could be studying, that could be moving house, that could be a new job, etc. I'm also thinking, like I'm saying here, stress seems to be a huge contributing factor. Um, and these last three really can be all classified as sort of stressful situations, like minimal stressful situations. That's not to take away how impactful insomnia can be, but usually when I'm talking about lack of sleep insomnia, it's because of the sleep paralysis, not sleep paralysis is not a symptom of that happening. So, and obviously loss is in that category, but I don't, I'm not going to say that's, oh, that's a little bit stressful, like studying loss. That's, that's a more serious, a serious trauma. So let's talk about the reported sensation. Um, the following table shows the reported sensations felt during an episode of sleep paralysis. So this is the emotions, the feeling, or what was going on during the paralysis. One person was just there, stuck. They weren't scared. They weren't feeling anything. It was just happening. Uh, one person accepted what was happening. Somebody actually could move but couldn't wake. So they could move their fingers and hands and fingers and thumbs and their fingers, etc., Someone just got an uneasy feeling. Um, two on two occasions, they woke up somewhere different. The woke didn't wake up in bed. Two people reported some happiness. Uh, one of them was um, the feeling of safety, where they believed one of their old pets had come to, yes, sit on their chest, but in a more protective way. Three people reported a feeling of the face being covered. Uh, someone said that felt like a material was put on on the mouth. Uh, levitation in three occasions and a feeling of very real pain in three occasions too. Um, six stories had audio and visual stimulus that could be lights flashing, um, someone reported lots of noise and can't breathe chest pressure which we now know is very common and is pretty much where the stories of the nightmare and the incubus come from. That's 12 occurrences. That's in line with historical folklore texts and ideas. How do people escape? Well, pet helping. One, thinking of a child in danger. Fighting the demon someone very brave. Trying to wriggle toes, get sensation back. Uh, the demon actually kills you and then you die, but that's when you wake up. That's the scariest one. It happened twice. Close eyes tight, bury head under covers three times. Thinking of family and friend. A lot of people were manifesting their friends or family to come and rescue them, grab, grab them by the hand. Five people use prayer or... Um, passages from the bible but the highest occurrences were in just jumping out of it you know where you're just trying to force that movement uh, a lot of people report it takes a long time you're trying you're trying you're trying and you're not coming out of it and suddenly it can happen so the demon is very common in sleep paralysis here's an example of a demon with its face and eyes just a bit of a bit more fun there for you type of demon none Lizard creature, TV static creature, man and child, or something that takes on their partner. Somebody was laying next to their partner and their partner became the demon. These all happen once in the stories. Baby and child and spiders and insects happen twice. Some uh, free people had a normal animal, a dog, a cat. It's still a shadowy figure. It wasn't an animal they knew, but that happened three times. The old hag, as mentioned before, which um, the witch, the old lady is for. A very old lady, thin, grey hair with warts and you know all the traditional stuff eight times a faceless dark shadow was seen uh, in nine occurrences something known which we'll come to in a minute um, was was there and an unseen something so they just felt a presence knew something was in the room or in the house with them 
So let's look at these known demons. A clown once. The hat man once. The Babadook once. This person actually was going to watch the film and they didn't. But then the Babadook came up in their sleep paralysis anyway. The Grudge Girl. That came up twice. Also twice was Slender Man. And the Dementor from Harry Popper Popper. What it do? What did the demon do when it was in the position, ready to do something scary? In one occurrence, it shapeshifted, and in one occurrence, it bit or scratched. In two occurrences, probably the worst, it just stared from the other side of the room. Three times, heavy breathing, or just as bad as the staring, just smiling. Four occasions, the hand came up and dragged the person, whether it be off their bed or somewhere, somewhere dark. In six occasions, it was violent, uh, or uh, there was a sexual assault in the paralysis. Um, one occasion of a violence, it had a meat cleaver and was chopping away, so sounds like a laugh. Um, seven occurrences, it was calling the person's name or just whispering, uh, hissing, was actually uh, came up a few times as well. Nine times, it moved the limbs of the person or the body, shaking, pulling legs, pulling arms, uh, and back to the chest again, 13 times. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to lick and subscribe, and I'm going to hand this back to me over there. Um, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and enjoy your lunch break. Thanks. What's the conclusion then? Well, mm, it seems to me that once a process of paralysis has begun, all our worst fears come to the surface. What are the most important functions to us? It's our heart and our breath. These keep us alive every day. This is the reason we're here. So even the hint of something being wrong with Eva is scary in itself. So if our mind is gonna trick us into thinking this is the worst possible state we can be in, then a good place to start that is by affecting our breath and our heartbeat by plopping something heavy down on our chest. And why not make it some scary demon that's stopping our vital functions? It's almost like the mind is washing its hands with it too. So subconsciously clever that rather than blame the mind after one of those dreams, it gives you something that feels real to blame instead. A figure, a demon. All that is for your own protection. It's actually more of a disturbing thought. That thought itself is the one doing this to you. The science is thus Two aspects of REM sleep, dreaming and paralysis, are occurring whilst a person is awake, and it is more likely to occur when a person is in a state of waking up or coming around. It is during REM that the dreaming takes place, and the brainstem paralyzes the body. It shuts down the motor neurons needed for movement. Trouble is, when that's normally happening, you're out of it totally, you're in deep sleep. When someone experiences sleep paralysis, these two things occur whilst the person is conscious with his or her eyes open, meaning the dreams are technically hypnagogic or hypnopompic hallucinations, and scarily just as vivid as anything you'd see when you're awake. These dreams can also be, and often are, multisensorial. Probably explains why we see, hear and feel the demon, and it feels so real, right? It's explained by science now though, yeah? Are, are, we, all, are we all okay now? Or is there something very sinister to it? A lot of those emails were quite scary actually, so I've decided oh, so I've decided to read the scariest one. So, the first time it happened, I woke up. I couldn't move, blink, and it felt like I was breathing through fog. You know that damp, weird feeling when everything, the air, the atmosphere is really heavy. I could move my eyes and I looked around my room and in the corner by the bathroom door was a creature. It was made from static, like when the TV loses a channel and goes all fuzzy. It was pointing at my other half, asleep in bed with me, and growling that he had to die. This seemed to go on forever, until suddenly it vanished. The second time it happened, I was dreaming about my grandma, who passed away when I was six. In my dream, she passed me a Bible and told me I knew what I had to do. She vanished and the same figure as last time appeared, but stood at the end of my bed. I couldn't move, blink, or even breathe properly again. The figure jumped onto my chest and kept growling at me, and telling me my family would all die. I started to recite the Lord's Prayer in my head, and it growled louder and louder. 
clung to my chest with these claws made of static. After what seemed like forever again, the figure vanished, but not before dragging its claws down my chest. I sat up in bed sobbing. There was no wake up this time. And when my other half woke up, he found three scratch marks on either side of my chest, thick, red, and fresh, as though made by a dog. To this day, I have no idea what happened and no idea where the scratch marks came from. So, my question after was, what even is sleep paralysis? Thank you so much for that story and for everyone that emailed in. I'm gonna keep those stories for now and I have something in the pipeline with them, so stay tuned. So my question now to probably my own mind is, how come when we wake up during that REM state, why isn't it to magic ponies and rainbows? Why is it always scary? I guess I'm trying to say when we're in sleep paralysis, how come our mind decides to fuck with us? In 1977, it was discovered that more than 100 previously healthy people from various Southeast Asian communities had died mysteriously in their sleep. The individuals affected were dying at a rate of 92 in every 100,000 from sudden unexplained nocturnal death syndrome. The median age for death was 33, and no underlying cause was ever found, only that subsequent studies revealed a high rate of sleep paralysis and believe in the Dabsog, the nightmare spirit, amongst members of the community. In the 35 years since sudden unexplained nocturnal death syndrome was first identified, the Centre for Disease Control's initial statement on the cause still holds a definitive cause of death remains unknown. So, um, be careful there when you're trapped in your own head, in your own body, unable to scream or cry for help. And, uh, good luck.